Hi, welcome to my tube. My name's Marge. I'm a Hioka. I'm an empath. I'm a talker, storyteller, data collector of the collective. <clears throat> I'm into astrology, astronomy, rocks, crystals, music, all kinds of stuff. Recognize we have we are all spirits. We all have a spirit Well, actually, you know come find out. I don't really think that everyone has a spirit I think some people are just kind of fillers, you know Just kind of backdrop fillers <laughs> filling in the the scenes uh, What do they call them extras on set? <laughs> the soulless, you know those that have let their ego surpass their spirit. It happens. We all have free will. Everyone can do it. You know, we can either go towards the light or stay grounded in our lower vibrational tendencies and have all those desires for external things that never ever fill us up and always leave us empty. And <sighs> human experience is about connection with other humans and. Making your frequency, you know, tuning in with as many people as you can and having a good time and, you know, creating solutions for the world. You know, we're supposed to be practitioners and, and custodians of this earth. And we were given that, 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 that task and we haven't done a good job. A lot of people have stayed quiet about that for a long time. They're starting to chime in with their take. You know, you're a lot of kids. Save our planet. Save our planet. You know. Maybe it'll be safe, maybe it'll won't. Maybe the poles will flip, maybe they won't. <clears throat> we aren't going to know until stuff happens. The thing is, is we, uh, we make a lot of stuff happen in our lives based on how we feel. So if we're always fearful and scared, we're going to make more things, draw more things in our life that are going to give us that vibration of fear and scarcity. I've been, mean, uh, I get got love Game of Thrones, love it, you know, dark, light, everybody has their free will, I mean, and as above, so below, as within, so without, storylines that play around, are playing out in that storyline are happening because, you know, people that are writing that show have freaking political, or have a, a planetary alignment it's that motivate them in a certain kind of way, and it's, and it's, uh, um, it's playing out in all of us. It's playing out in, in the shows that we're seeing on Netflix and Hulu with all the shared consciousness stuff, all the OA stuff, you know. Shirley MacLaine is talking about, has been talking for years about recall of her uh, past lives and lives in Atlantis and more and more people are waking up to this, you know. They're just ignoring all those governments and, and those... Uh, those control freaks that have told us what to believe for so long because the, the proof that we're the verification that we're seeing isn't lining up with what they're said and everybody's waving, waving their bull crap flag you know um, <clears throat> we don't we can plan for the life that we want oh anyway I was just, sorry, let me let me switch back gears over to what I was talking about I've been watching um Game of Thrones, and, and I've been watching a couple of, uh, a few interviews, because I knew that, that, uh, Emily Clark, Emily, Emily, um, Emily, Emily Clark, Danny, she had had a couple of strokes, aneurysm, stroke, blame bleeds, um, I know she, and then, but I, I, I heard about it, but today, it, you know, I guess I wasn't ready to look all the way into the story and I did that today and she had the first one after season one and then the second one I believe was out in season three and uh, it's amazing how and she she talks about this in her experience and I've only been the spectator because when I was 15 my mom had a major brainstem stroke and uh, I was the only one around for her and uh, Actually, I hadn't been home all week. She'd been having an episode, a uh, psychotic episode, and uh, I had uh, stayed over at a friend's house. I was a freshman in high school, and I had a gut feeling to go home, and I went home, and I walked in, and she she was in her bed, and she was quiet and still, and 
I just said, Mom, I'm home. And she's like, call an ambulance. And I called an ambulance, and I rode with her into the... And they just thought she was a pale head, you know, because we're poor from Central Valley, so they just thought she was on drugs or something, you know. And uh, I overheard that and freaking went out and made a scene at the nurse's station and insisted on that a doctor come down and see her, and or they're going to have a bigger problem on their hand. And, um, and they put her on oxygen and stuff, and... And uh, I couldn't get a hold of my brother. He was over at a friend's house. I didn't get a hold of him until early the next day. I got a hold of his friend, and then his friend found him. And then he came down and yelled at Mom for leaving the house a mess. Um, so that was the f my oh, and then but before that, my father had had a had an, an an incident where he had he was a truck driver, and these covert pipes had fallen off the truck. This happened when I was twelve. And they crashed it, crucked his head in, in six places and crushed one hip and then shattered the opposite leg. And he had to learn how to talk and walk and, you know, all that again. And I didn't know him so well before the accident, but there wasn't much of the man I knew before the accident that was there after the accident. And we just ain't never been in alignment anyway. But I do have a lot of positive attributes. I got uh, some good ones from him. My work ethic is strong and I work I'm strong as a horse. And... And, um, things like that were both Aries, uh, so we butt heads, you know, strong types and all. <sighs> anyway, um, so I know what it's like for people to cog cog we don't always get the same people that we sign up with, you know, a lot of parents, a lot of people, they lose their, for whatever reason, lose their parents at a young age, you know, um. You know, and I, I just, I don't, I, I look at it as not look, losing mine, but I never looked at my parents as parents. They were always people to me, and, and people, you know, and, and that's been to an advantage to me. And now, because as other people get older, they see their parents as parents, and then something happens later in life, and they see them as a person, and, and, and they don't respond and react to it real well, you know what I mean? But um, my parents have always just been people to me, and, and, uh, and, uh, but I, I know a lot about cognitive function, and I know more about the brain, you know, than than most people do. Uh, maybe not the terminology, but I, I I know a lot how it works. And, and it was just really cool to see that uh, Emily Clark had started a foundation to help people with brain injuries, you know. And I could help them so much in that capacity because I have a lot of ideas to how to, to let people, you know, because what I want to do is let people modify their living situations to be more comfortable for them you know you know so they don't have to change their living situations but but I can I have ways that and clever endeavors of how to to you know to do things and set things up for them to help them cognitively too it's like uh it's like what is that career or that uh what is that career field where they help people they, they go in after like they lose it and they have to help I can do that. I can help so many people in so many ways. I just don't know how to get through to people, you know, because I try, because I'm direct and I'm forthright. Maybe I'll write Danny a letter, you know, because I've had, I'm 45 now, so I got 30 years, 33 years of experience of, of dealing with people with cognitive um, limitations, you know, and they're always changing too, because we're always changing. But I just think it's brilliant how she was like, instinctually she knew to just start telling herself stuff just she just started like telling herself lines and just doing lines in draconian or draconian or whatever and she just started like say just using her because she knew that part of her brain was dying she knew that she she inherently in her knew that that that's why because and basically your brain is just like if you look at a map of the united states that's all your brain is right and then you get a bleed and it's a sinkhole and a sinkhole right where a road is, like I-5, <laughs> like a major interstate, right? So what happens is, is the synopsis is going, the, the, the brain waves are going through, and then the sinkhole happens because you have a brain bleed, and now it has to think how to, so that's why people have a hard time because ordinarily they could say, move this hand from this hand to this hand, but now there's a sinkhole, and now the, the thought process is going a different way. So it has to backtrack, reroute, and tell this to do this. Or it just doesn't. Or there's a disconnect and it won't do it. You know? 
so much to it. Anyway, but I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, what else? It's Friday. Get to go put, uh, have a couple of used tires put on the big red truck. I'm super excited about this because now we're back on the road, y'all. Now, you know, I think I'm going to start taking this laptop out and doing videos in other places and then uploading them, you know, taking mom out, you know, she's, she needs to be out. She's ready and raring to go, y'all. So, uh, I ain't, I'm still recovering from my MRI day a few days ago. Back is just you know a little sore, but but I feel great. My positive attitude, you know, I'm I got an attitude of gratitude. And uh, next week I'm gonna I think I'm gonna take mom over to to the coast during the week when it's less busy for mom's day. So that should be good. Maybe kick around, look for some sand dollars and whatnot. Yeah. Anyway, that's all I got for today. Hope you have a rad day. Peace.